Ah, online comics. With over 13,000 hosted by Comic Genesis alone, there's always more to discover. I've been enjoying these for nearly a decade now, and I've decided to share with you all a list of my 10 personal favorites. Originally, I released this top 10 list in pieces as I finished them. This video is a composite of all those smaller videos. I've also put links to each of the 12 reviews in this video's description, so you can select which ones you want to watch for your viewing pleasure. But first, I have an honorable mention. Bob and George. So much is owed to Bob and George. If we were to measure success in imitators, then this is one of the most successful online comics ever written. Countless other webcomics have borrowed Bob and George's format, character interpretations, style of humor, even their running gags. In fact, Bob and George is often credited with popularizing the very concept of the Sprite comic. He also hosts another 80 webcomics on his site, Oddball Fan Comics and Jailhouse Blues being my favorites. The Book of Biff. Single panel joke a day format, updating five days a week. You know, there really should be desktop calendars of this comic. Chris Halbeck must enjoy his work more than any other artist. Not just because the content is so nutty and whimsical, but because Biff is so much fun to draw! Here's one of my own poor attempts to capture the majesty that is Biff. I've also linked to the forum thread full of motivational posters involving Biff. What if the Star Wars movies had never been made, and instead, starting with Episode 1, had been a D&D campaign, and not a particularly good one at that? Then you'd have Darths and Droids. It makes no attempt to hide the fact that it's modeled after DM of the Rings, and shares most of the same tropes. Especially the players, well acting like players. You know, ignoring their DM and making up their own names and explanations for things. Attacking people they're not supposed to attack. Running off to places the DM never expected them to go. Looting everything they see. And generally derailing the plot at every opportunity. Oh, did I mention Jar Jar is played by a little girl? Actually, I find this to be an improvement over the original character. I find it particularly amusing that the DM's plans don't even vaguely resemble the plots of the actual Star Wars movies, and that the player's unpredictable and often short-sighted actions cause the events of the movies to happen. If you're a fan of role-playing, Star Wars, or both, then this is the comic for you. The Adventurers. This was my first online comic. You know the competition is fierce when top-notch video game humor and maximum nostalgia value only nets you eighth place. The comic concluded in 2006, but I still occasionally check in to see if there's a new game plus or bonus dungeon. 
The early art is atrocious, though it got less awful as time went on, until, after years and years of endlessly honing his skills, Mark Shallow finally reached the coveted pinnacle artists the world over call barely passable. The strength of the comic is definitely the humor, most of which comes from the crazed antics of the villains and the sheer maddening absurdity of the JRPG world our heroes live in. If you're a fan of RPGs, you'll probably love the adventurers. Theater. This is another one you read purely for the humor. Based on the original Final Fantasy, it's text-heavy and most of the, often dark, humor comes from someone saying or doing something phenomenally, unthinkably stupid. Or role-playing jokes. <laughs> Love the role-playing jokes. It's not like the original game's dialogue does anything to undermine the comic's premise that everyone in it is outrageously stupid. Instead of being noble champions, Brian has cast the Light Warriors as stupid, self-absorbed, self-destructive, avaricious, and often malevolent group, who often cause more destruction and suffering than they prevent. This comic is clearly made for role players and old school gamers. Walkie. Now this comic ended its almost five year run back in 2004, but many of the characters continue to see use in David Willis's later works. While on the surface, It's Walkie appears to be a comedy, and it is hilarious. But don't let that fool you. Underneath all that goofy alien busting action beats the heart of a hardcore drama. While I really like most of the characters, if I was to only talk about one, it would have to be Dina. Unlike the other characters, she doesn't have any superpowers, a ridiculously tragic backstory, or a wacky personality. Well, aside from one or two quirks. Walkie asks her out, and she falls in love with what is quite possibly the first human to ever express interest in her. Now since the next comic David Willis made is literally titled Joyce and Walkie, and that title is clearly visible above each and every single page of its Walkie, I'll just assume that any new readers already know this. Tina didn't stand a chance. Why do I bring her up? Because the way the story is structured, you expect the author to just cop out and kill her. Then Walkie would have run back to Joyce grieving. But he doesn't instead brilliantly playing with audience expectations, and then letting events play out naturally between the characters. The author never takes the easy way out. He never conveniently forgets details. Even events that occur during goofy crossovers have lasting repercussions. 
dedication to staying true to the story and forcing the characters to solve their own messes is what marks it as one of the very best, at least for me. Goblins! What started out as an unassuming D&D parody about some oddly named goblins that get attacked by players all the time has really grown into a top-notch story with surprisingly dark plot lines. Most hand-drawn online comics show a great deal of artistic improvement over the years. In Goblins, the contrast is so stark, Terrell Hunt actually posted a comparison to his original art with his current art as the first page so that, as he puts it, you won't wonder if you've accidentally clicked onto another comic. I can only dream of someday getting endorsements like this one. The subcomic Temp's fate is worth checking out as well. Block Mercenary. This is a strictly hard sci-fi about a company of mercenaries. The comic is filled with very creative aliens. Even the main character is a freakish alien monster. Its humor is consistent, the plots are good, and is never afraid to let a storyline shake things up and forever change the status quo. Our hero constantly comes up with new uses for his monstrous abilities as new situations and environments present themselves. The impact of every technological development is well thought out. The author even keeps track of little things, like damage the characters and their ship receive. It's not hard to see that Howard Taylor is a true sci-fi fan from his work. By the way, Squawk Mercenary Post's Daily has been running for 10 years now. The last time Howard Taylor missed an update? Never. Not even once. That's a level of dedication that's virtually unheard of in the world of online comics. Genius. 
It's adventure! It's mad science! It's romance! Since her parents vanished when she was a child, Agatha's entire life has been a lie. Her caretakers keep their silence, her boss keeps an eye on her, and her incredible powers have been hidden from her. But she finds herself cast into the world of mad science when those powers awaken, and she finds that her very existence is a crime against the Empire. Thankfully, she is able to collect an assortment of powerful allies as she travels, which she'll need as her lineage of ever-increasing mad powers draws the interest of formidable villains who are able to bring considerable forces against her. What insidious plans does the Baron and his son, Gil, have in store for Agatha? Will Othar, gentleman adventurer, be able to save her? Or will his antics only serve to hasten her demise? Or will her newfound mad science destroy them all? Find out by reading Girl Genius! There's a lot of webcomics out there that focus on role-playing gags, but Order of the Stick is the undisputed king of D&D humor. Honestly, it amazes me how many role-players I meet that don't read, or sometimes have never even heard of this comic. Of course, once you say the word stick figures, people tend to completely lose interest. All I can say is that the writing really does make up for it. The comic manages to be hilarious, have well-developed characters, and, most surprisingly, a strong storyline, and do all of these things very well. Of course, like 99% of all webcomics, it didn't start out as strong as it is today. It took Rich Burlew a while to hit his stride. Also, I have to say, out of all the webcomic villains I've seen, Zykon has to be my favorite. A wacky, fun-loving lich whose apparent agenda seesaws between using his powers on prisoners and helpless lackeys for the evil evilulls, and trying to conquer the world. Yet, at the same time, he's a powerful, ruthless monster without a shred of humanity left in him, continually terrorizing and destroying everything around him. For fans of D&D, and pen and paper role-playing in general, this one is a must-read.
The Adventures of Minion Master. The epic struggle of a great mastermind fighting to carve out his place in the world, gathering his own formidable minion army, while all the while making war with other supervillains and toppling their empires one after another. Of course, the backbone of his forces are the minions. And what minions they are! Strategist Tor. The Sampire. Tinkerer Sasha. Yeah, some cute talking animal. And a zombie's head mounted upon a stick. And his foes come in every shape and stripe. Arms dealers, demon mutant horns, snipers, frogs, override B1, mechs, villainous marketing, and... Wait, 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 wait. This is all completely wrong. Minion Master isn't even one of the primary cast. Let's start off. Alien Friend. It's a domestic comedy following the adventures of a juvenile space alien as she tries to cope with the complexities of life on Earth. No, wait, wait, that's not right either. The comic is called Lost in Timeless Space. And it's about a really angry bunny pirate who likes stabbing people. No, wait, a young woman on a journey of self-discovery and mass murder. Nah, that's not right either. It's about a hideous, dystopian society and a mad scientist who fights against their tyrannical... I mean, it's the story of a lone warrior who journeys into the mouth of hell itself. A desperate woman who sells her very soul to command the power of the dark arts. A, a slasher horror featuring... Or maybe it was about... Vampires and zombies? I'm pretty sure that there's dragons and holiday cheer in there somewhere. <clears throat> Sluggy Freelance. The weird and often cross-dimensional adventures of Torg and his friends. It's all of this and oh so much more. In a world where anything can happen, only one man can stand against the dark forces of King Radical. But first, he must leave on a journey, cure exotic diseases, fight hordes of zombies, team up with Benjamin Franklin, get a motorcycle, defeat his arch nemesis, 
high by the gorilla. Race through a trap infested dungeon. And battle with dinosaurs. Repeatedly. Dr. McNinja. Coming summer. 2004. And that's it for my top 10 favorite webcomics. I hope I introduced you to a good comic you haven't read before. Disagree with me? Or think I missed a great comic? There's a fair chance I've not gotten around to reading it. Or possibly that I've never even heard of it. So please comment or make response videos showing me what I've been missing all these years.